started this thing. You, you just had the privilege of doing something that reflects the glory of God. Because somehow or another, he has shared with us this capacity in a, in a way. It's like, it's not, it's not exactly his creative power, is it? Of course not. But, but just, like, just like that reflection in a mirror, it's not exactly us. See? But it tells you something about us, doesn't it? Tells you a little something about how we look, right? And what we're like, doesn't it? Well, well here's the wonderful thing. Here's the wonderful thing. From the very beginning there in the scriptures, it said that we are made in the image and likeness of God. See? And, and, and image means image means that you look at us and you see something that reminds you of God. And likeness means that you watch us and you see something that reminds you of the way God is in his activity and what he does. Isn't that something? Yeah. Image and likeness. We, we sort of appear to be what he is in some way. And, and when you watch us, you will see us doing things that are like the things that he does. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Amen. And you and I just did it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we just did it. We just proved that those words in the scripture are true. Amen. See? But here's, here's why I, I think we forget something. Each and every one of us started out, didn't we? As a little bit of cells in the room, and now that's a tiny, that looks like a, looks like a tiny little person. And uh, we all started there. And we could up and up, and then we were born, and then we grew up to be what we are now. And we can sit here, have a church, and putting the stars in place, and raising up the mountains, and standing at the seashore to watch the sun go down. Isn't that something? Like that? You know what's awesome about it, though? Is that there is just a little echo, just a little bit of God in each and every one of us. And you can see it right there in yourself. You can make it happen. But it also means that, that just as you and I can take even some of the most awesome possibilities of the world and we can see them in our head, we can write them in our books, we can more and more now use our little technology, put them up on the screen and make them look real. See? We, can, we, can, we can do things that are like. Not, they aren't the things he does, but they're like them. And that, that little person growing up in the womb, from the moment that God has fashioned them, they are just like that. But that means that when you have such a little person growing in your womb, what's really going on is that right there in, in your womb and in your care, the world is being made all over again. Because what is possible for us in reality with God, he has already known that child in the womb, sitting there, making up the mountains in their head, making up the seas, making up the sunsets. He already knows them. He already knows us as well. When we see somebody suffering and showing the heart of God, we lift them up to, to give them comfort. He knows that. He knows us as someone, when we see somebody being brutalized, who will, who will rush forward and lay our bodies down as Jesus laid his body down for us. He knows us as that person who will act with God's love, who will act with God's justice, who will act according to God's will. He knows us there. That's why I think we don't use this word anymore. These people have brainwashed us. And, and what goes on between a man and a woman in order to produce that wondrous life in the womb, we call it sex. See? You know what the word was? They used to call that procreation. Procreation. The wonderful thing about that word is that when you speak that word, you are reminded of what you're really doing. That's why, by the way, I know some people may, may find this a little unseemly in church, but I don't think so. But I'll just remind you, that is why it feels so good. Okay? That is why it feels so good, because something in it is meant to remind you of the glory of God. Something in it is meant to remind you of the joy of his creation. Something in it is meant to remind you of the love that was in his heart, of the longing he had for the world he was bringing into being. 
that was his will. Something in it is meant to make you feel in that moment just a tiny little bit like God must have felt when he said, let there be light. And there was light. That's That's what it's about, y'all. And that wonderful word, procreation, it reminds us of what's really involved. Now, let me ask you something still. What, what, what do you think? Once you have remembered this, I don't think it's possible to make a, a child the same way ever again. I don't think it's possible to feel the little stirring of life in that womb, whether you're a mother feeling it as, as right inside, as part of who you are, or whether you're a father just laying your hand and feeling that little kick the way I did when my kids were coming along. Because what you feel there, you know, it's not just a little kick of a tiny little being, it's, it is the Big Bang that they talk about. It's, it is, it is the, the planets and the stars being put in their place. It is the mountains rising up. It is the seas rushing apart. It is the land coming into being. You are feeling the recreation of the world. And what's more, you are feeling the love, the pride, the satisfaction that knows that by God's will and grace, you, you, little you, have been a part of it. And all of that, all of that forgotten, all of that denied, all of that betrayed, each and every time we wipe out that universe which is God's will and turn our back on his glorious gift of procreation. So at the end of the day, I, I, I think we all, we all ought to realize that if we are moved now to stand in defense of that innocent life and try to stop people from killing us, I know there are folks, and, and I guess uh, Mr. Obama would count himself among them. They pretend to be all in favor of you and me is intended by God to be a restatement of that whole creation. You see, right here in our hearts and minds and with So if we really want to be responsible to the whole, we really want to be responsible to the universe, we really want to be responsible to the world, that we must stand in defense of that which would destroy the loving will that brought it into being in the first place. And that loving will repeated in our own hearts is what beats in the heart of the child, what grows in the limbs of that being in the womb. And so I I will return to the work that we're trying to do over at Notre Dame with a renewed confirmation that in every possible way, we are standing in the will of God. We We are fighting in the name of his love. We are fighting for the sake of his truth. And we are fighting to bring all of those things really back to life, starting with the heart of every single mother or every single child in the world. Can I just quote for you? For that love, which we have all got, in some way, some time, from somebody, that love touched us with the hand of God. It wrapped us in the warmth of God. It let us know the will of God that we are here. And that is good. Yes, it is. And, and as we stand, we make the affirmation of that good. And it is in good conscience that I that I ask people to stand with me. Because where God wants you to be, can never be wrong. And the other day I found this out when we were there in the St. Joseph County Jail and, and we were talking to the men who were gathered in the holding cell and we were praying. And, and, and uh, some of the other inmates came over and they joined us in prayer and then we started to have talk. And you know what? Before long, I don't think there was anybody in that holding area who remembered they were in jail. <laughs> and you know why that is? Because we had stood fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free.